Hi, Sean. So, this is a camera flip video about short books. I watched Britta Bowler's um, video about short and sweet, 30 books in 30 days. Uh, I think that was back in October. And then um, more recently, you did yours on short books. And out of the 10 that you featured, I'd read five. Um, four of them I loved, one of them I hated. <laughs> Isn't that weird how sometimes our tastes are exactly um, congruent and other times, no. Um, you know which one I mean. But anyway, one of the ones I'm really glad that you mentioned was uh, Helen Garner's The Spare Room. Oh, such a good book. Anyway, you had a link to Stephen Donahue's video where he what he called weaponized I'm not sure <laughs> um, how that word fits exactly but you know made a tag out of um, Britta's short books video and um, so his definition was books that were under 200 pages whereas Britta said books that are 100 pages or maximum 120 I think she said which is more of a novella to me but I'm going to try and avoid novellas and get more into the novel length but short so here goes my most favorite short book is The Summer Book by Tova Jansson and um, I believe it was translated from the Swedish by Thomas Thiel and uh, mm. so it's uh, a six-year-old girl and a grandmother um, and little vignettes of their time spent on an island, Finnish island. And uh, so it's about life. It's about the natural world. Um, that one, there's some bittersweet aspects to it um, because mortality definitely comes into it um, but I would call that one short and sweet most of the short books I like are short and sharp <laughs> so um, that's what I would how I would describe this one Gaetan Soucy a Quebec author um, the little girl who was too afraid of matches this one's translated from the French by Sheila Fishman. Uh, very short, um, like 100, under 140 pages. And the voice in this one just got me right from the start. So we've got uh, two siblings and they were raised pretty much in complete isolation from the rest of the world by their father who is mentally ill. And um, so they're teenagers at this point and one and the story is being narrated by one of them and they're having to interact with the world now because their father has committed suicide so tragic dark almost to the point of horror uh, but there's also hope um, uh, Gaetan Soucy died oh, I don't know about eight years ago he was young only about 54 he died of a heart attack very sad I would he has written some other books, but I really wish I could have seen what else he was going to do. Um, speaking of dark, there's The Driver's Seat by Muriel Spark. Um, uh, pretty unsettling, but also breezy. Uh, I just love her style. Um, that one's about a woman who goes off on a holiday and um, things take a turn for the dark. <laughs> yes, it's actually downright disturbing, that one. But so great. Um, this one is not disturbing. It's absolutely lovely. The Frozen Thames by Helen Humphreys. And um, so it's a series of um, little very brief stories almost vignettes based on um, actual points in history where the River Thames in London 
froze solid. And I think it's happened about 40 times. Um, so the first uh, recorded time was in 1142. And, um, and then this book goes up until like the mid 19th century. And um, since then, uh, some, maybe the bridge was ch the bridges were changed or something like that. And the way that the water flows, it hasn't frozen since. And maybe global warming. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, you, I would say that place is um, a character in this book, and um, and each of the little vignettes are also um, really character based, and. It's got illustrations in it also. Um, historic documents. Um, if you can see that. Uh, I think this is the longest of the books I've pulled and it's 180 pages, but you see it's so d tiny that there's not very much on each page. Plus there's all these illustrations. So sweet, very nice. Uh, what else have I got? Um, Oh, one of Toni Morrison's books is quite short. Uh, well, more than one are short, but this one I'm thinking of is about 145 pages, and it's called Home, and it's about a um, a black soldier. So he's a veteran of the Korean War, and he comes home quite traumatized, and um, his sister needs his help. So um, it's about finding home and um, uh, finding his inner resources, I guess. Uh, her storytelling just, it just makes it seem effortless um, what she does. Uh, love her writing and the way she covers um, social and political cultural issues um, within great stories. Um, I know you've read this one, Bear, <laughs> by Marion Engel, um, but I just want to say this is one of my favorite short stories too. Um, how long this one is. There's an afterword, we're not going to say that one. Uh, 115 pages. And uh, what is it? Nuanced. Um, it's about a librarian and a bear. Uh, it's just so gutsy and unforgettable. So, love it. What else? Um, well, this is another one I think you've read, We the Animals by Justin Torres. Uh, that was the first book I ever read in ebook format. Um, at that time, the only device I had for reading ebooks was on my iPod. And um, the story was so good that I got myself used to reading on that tiny little screen because I just could not stop reading. Um, another really exuberant um, novel. Um, there is a lot of uh, third person plural talking, you know, the we. I love the voice in it. It is about brotherhood. Um, the family is of mixed ethnicity, I think. And, um, and one of the brothers is Gay. and um, it's a really poignant de depiction of the price that can be paid for being different. Yeah. Uh, Ali Smith is another one of my favorite authors and a short book of hers that I love is Girl Meets Boy. So that one is part of the Canongate myth series, and it's a retelling of one of Ovid's Metamorphoses stories. And it's a lesbian story. Um, the 
dialogue is just so sharp. Um, but also, like Allie Smith does, you know, she's just so smart and so witty. Uh, she just dazzles me. Um, but she is talking about environmental issues in there and, um, you know, climate change. There's political commentary. Uh, just excellent. Um, I know you're not big on myths and retellings, but hmm, I think you might like that one. That reminds me of Jeanette Winterson's uh, Cannon Gate myth. Uh, you know, what the one she contributed was on um, Atlas and Heracles, and it's called Weight. And I also really, really like that one. But I think it's not so much a Sean book. Uh, what else? What else? Short stories. God Loves Hair by Vivek Shreya. Uh, this is her very first book. And it's actually a collection of vignettes. Um, I think I've used that word a lot in this video, vignettes. Um, that's a hallmark, I guess, for the kind of stuff I like reading. And um, uh, so Vivek grew up in Edmonton, South Asian. So uh, these stories are about um, realizing that she's queer. Um, there's so the stories about school, stories about family, and stories about um, going to temple um, and how religion, the Hindu religion, um, helped her feel okay about herself. And uh, so the other thing about these short little stories is there are also illustrations. Yes, and absolutely um, heartwarming. That one is sweet, yes. Um, I found a quote by Herman Melville about short works. Uh, Those which pretend to little but abound in much. Yeah. Those literary gems that pack a wallop. Love them. And um, short stories, of course. I love short stories. And so I just wanted to mention how much I'm looking forward to December because I am going to start reading my short story advent calendar. Um, and what I pulled out is um, a previous edition of the short story advent calendar because this one's already been opened and I haven't opened the 2021 yet so I just wanted to show you how cute so each story is individually bound you know speaking of gems and this one for the first it's a book a short story called Flamingo by Jessica Westhead Adore her short stories. They're totally weird and wonderful. So I can still remember how excited I was. <laughs> it's like oh, Jessica Westhead. And then the final story, December 25th, was by an author I'd never heard of. And this is another great thing about um, reading a collection of short stories by uh, like an anthology, I guess, by different authors. So this one is a, um, I think he's Austrian or German, because it's translated from German, Adelbert Stifter. And the story is Rock Crystal, translated by Lee Hollander. And it's a fatter story. Um, the whole design of this is so cool. Um, the store, the, the binding, or the... The paper around each short story went from dark to light till it was just white for the final story. Uh, it's got its own little case. Uh, just beautiful object to hold. 
And then I just thought I would mention one that I've only just started reading, which is uh, one of these short books, like less than 150 pages, Mani Kenatish by Naomi Fontaine. And this one is translated by who? Louise von Flutov. So she is a, Naomi Fontaine is an Innu author, indigenous author from Quebec. And uh, I'm only a few chapters in, loving it. So there's a suggestion for Indigathon next year, maybe. Or, I don't know, you like me, we'll read indigenous books year round. And so there. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll talk to you soon.